Okay, hi, <laughs> my name's Kathleen, and I am here to talk about how we've really tried to start using dimensional insight a lot more across the organization. And a lot of what we, what I'm hearing is very similar to what we are, have seen at my organization. So I'm just gonna give you a quick introduction to my hospital, talk about some of the current things or the previous, the previous things that we were doing, our history as a customer and why we chose to build a customized application, uh, what lessons we learned from that and our next steps. So um, I work for Salinas Valley Memorial Hospital. It is a 263 licensed bed hospital in Monterey County, California. We were opened in 1953. Um, some statistics from 2021, I'm not gonna read all of them, but I did wanna point out that last year we had 49,521 ED visits, 66,344 diagnostic imaging procedures, and we have a 16 bad ED, so we are a very busy place. Sometimes don't know how they do it. Um, we have some awards that we're really proud of, but just want to point out that we are a LeapFrog A, and we were magnet recognized in 2021. We have multiple systems that we use at the hospital. I hear that a lot today as well. Um, we have Meditech that we use as the hospital EMR, Epic in our clinics, Pisces for OR, Centricity for OB, and multiple other systems across the enterprise. Typical dashboard process was to run a report from its source system, um, possibly manually entering data into Excel, doing some VLOOKUPs, manually stitching a bunch of stuff together, emailing copies of it, taking paper copies to it, and inevitably someone wants to change it so the paper copy doesn't match the file, and just a mess, which I think everybody can relate to, right? Um, and so we have a really old, uh, traditional look to the dashboard that they were just so accom uh, accustomed to seeing, like a measure name on the left, a target, and then across the top, your across your horizontal, axis, your dates, and then the results compared to the target, red or green, in the boxes. And we start fresh every year with a new dashboard and fill the spreadsheet in as we would go. So that's, um, to use the data repository reports, there's always issues with those reports. Sometimes you wouldn't know who the population was, and I had been called out on that many times myself. In a meeting, you're presenting something, and it, is that adults, is that inpatients, outpatients? We, I didn't always know. Um, you had to, there wasn't really a formal change management process. So sometimes somebody could actually ask for a uh, one of your reports to be changed and IT would just go ahead and change it and you wouldn't know. You might recognize the next month that your number looked way different. Um, and we do have multiple reports with the same name. So an example of that. If I'm trying to see Narcan usage, I have two reports with the exact same name. So I don't know which one of those includes the ED, which one of those excludes the ED. So it's difficult to tell. Uh, we have been with Dimensional Insight since 2011. We have licenses for ProDiver, Diveport, and a Measure Factory license. We have accounts, charges, diagnoses, ED log, OR log, and procedures. Yet, with all of that, no one was really using it. We have very low adoption, um, lots, lots of um, comments on it, some of them being, it doesn't have what we need, it's too complicated, it's just easier to have IT write the report. So, you know, it kind of sad. So in 2019, I came to the organization and um, I think Keith came out and did another training session for us. So there was a couple of us who were new in the quality department. So when we came back to the office, my coworker Charvel was fantastic at remembering pro divers. She could remember multi-tab and all this stuff. And Anne knew how to make, in dive port, she knew how to make all the pretty things. So the three of us started putting our heads together and seeing what we could find with what we already had. 
So some of the things that we were able to pull was uh, looking at patients who left AMA. We could see what was their length of stay, what was their diagnoses, what was their age group, what other things could we look at. We could start correlating some of that with our disruptive patient, e di disruptive person events. So you could start seeing some correlations. Um, things that had charge codes, we could pull by the charge code. So we were able to simplify code blue tracking Code blues are done on a piece of paper that gets in an envelope and goes in a, someone's desk and maybe get to you later. So we could have it, pull it by the charge code. So every morning you had a current list of where your events were. Um, we could also look by charge codes for A1C tests. We noticed that we were over utilizing our A1C tests and um, my coworker was able to put together some stuff for our cancer center that they estimated saved them six to eight hours a month of manual work. So we started to put together, you know, we started to get a plan with our department to get some budget money because we thought we really should be using this product more. Um, in June of last year, our ED manager came over and he had a pretty large request for data and he needs something more real time with the volumes that they were seeing in the increase every year we knew that running a report a month behind just wasn't going to do it anymore so we started to look at what do we have in pro diver and what can we already what can we already use so we used the ed log and started to build some things and they're not pretty but they're a start right so we put some tables up and some graphs and everything, and he started using some of the stuff that we were building in the morning safety huddle and got the attention of our COO who liked the fact that it was updated every day and someone was actually using it. So we have some, you know, just some more graphs and trends, things that they didn't look like pretty like what Ann made, but you know, I did what I could. So um, when we got our approval for our budget, we tossed around some ideas of, you know, should we stick to something in the quality department or should we do something more enterprise wide? And I thought, our, we have the backing of our COO and we should just take this opportunity to see how we can use this product outside of the department. So we optimize, we decided to do a custom throughput dashboard. So the, when we were in our planning stage, we looked at how long we thought it was going to took. So we gave ourselves four months from the date the statement of work was signed. Um, we had a $60,000 budget and our scope was to be just to build the existing throughput measures, not to do anything outside of what we were currently looking at. So for the requirements gathering, we went to each of the areas that had information on this report and spent time seeing how they collected their data, how they reported it, how, how they calculated their results that would end up on the final spreadsheet. And we also did some time studies to make sure that we were saving time so we could show how much time we had saved. Um, for the design, we opted to use just a standard dive port matrix portlet. Um, so we had a formal kickoff on February 2nd. Um, we had a meeting with a core team that was myself and some of the people from Salinas, someone from IT, another person from quality, and um, leaders would come ad hoc, and with Nora and Jeannie from Dimensional Insight. I was bi-weekly I had to update the COO, so he was keeping me on track, making sure I was doing my job. Um, so we had to build data sets. We brought in lab results, orders, and the ED census. So all in all, we built 33 ED measures, 12 lab, 17 imaging measures, 24 inpatient admission measures, and seven inpatient discharge measures. Um, in the testing phase, the data element validation, that went really smoothly. Uh, you know, things pulled over really easily. Data measures validation was a little difficult. Um, we 
have some exclusions to some of our measures that we didn't anticipate. So we've been working on trying to take care of all those exclusions and make our measures look like what our users are used to seeing. Um, we launched it on May 4th and um, had some discussions with Nora about whether we should launch it or not because we've been down the road with Dimensional Insight for a few years and so we didn't want to come out with something that was wrong. But we also had the users really with us on this journey and thought if we wait too much longer, meetings will get canceled. You know, in the summertime, all the meetings get canceled. So thought if we don't do it now in May, we might be late summer, early fall before we launch it. So we decided that we would launch it on May 4th. So we're looking at a maintenance, what we're gonna do for a maintenance plan. So we're looking, we don't have an analytics department right now, so we're looking at how we're gonna support this in the long term. But here's where our new dashboard is. So we have a tile right here on the, on the far right. We have a throughput tile there, the little patient, because that's who it's all about. Um, our initial launch, we had this, just the standard matrix portlet with the month to date, the current complete month, and the year to date numbers. Um, this is an example of the ED measures. So we have ED to provider, median time, door to provider, the number, the ED admission length of stay, et cetera, some of your typical ED turnaround times. Next thing he wanted to do, we were asked to do was to pull in target values. So, um, I have a column in the middle, and unfortunately, when I had made this screenshot, the target wasn't showing that day. So, <laughs> but I, we have we started to incorporate the targets because our users are really that's what they are comparing. They're not comparing to last year; they're comparing to what how how they're performing against the target that we set each fiscal year. Um, we changed a couple things in some of the pop-ups. So we were playing around with some of the colors, change the graph colors, trying to make it more like Salinas's colors, um, but we are rebranding now, so we're holding off on that. But um, I have seen our COO, he, he really likes this when I'm in the meetings, he's pulling up this and using it a lot because he didn't have this functionality before. And I think that the fact that the definition is on there, we all kind of take that for granted because we work in this, but my users hadn't seen that before, so it helped with clarifying what they were actually looking at. Um, some of the analysis screens, there's different ways, different um, initial dimensions that we've set up depending on what they want to look at. So on this particular one, I have ED x-ray median order to report time. And if you look by the, I have it sorted by the order hour. She can look at, the director can look at that and compare it immediately to the target and she can see, oh, wait a minute, you know, at one, two o'clock in the morning, we were way over target and that's when we have the outsourced company who's reading them. So, you know, they have been able to follow up with them and make sure they're getting those turnaround times that they need to. I'm gonna skip that one. Um, one thing that we were asked to look at was could we do the ESI volume by time of day? So playing around with some graphs and, and looking at what we could do and could we put that in a table? And you can see the typical you know, ED flow comes in pretty predictable across all of the severity indexes. Um, also building some interactive stamps. Um, so these were pretty cool. Uh, Again, another feature that my users didn't have before, so trying to conserve on some real estate and give them the information that they need. Um, so really working through challenges to do this, um, like I said, overcoming objections. A lot of people are, have said, well, we've had this for years, it doesn't work, don't waste your time. Nobody's going to use it, and my personal favorite, there's a thing called the data repository, you know. So, you know, <laughs> I was like, yeah, I know. <laughs> um, but, and another challenge was really building a centralized data dictionary. As we were going through this, there were certain measures that 
if I went to three sources, it had three different definitions. So we had to come together as a group and say, what are we, what are we measuring here? And an, another challenge has been looking at it is throughput instead of a department specific metric. So our departments have been very department centric. They're measuring their performance. But this is really about measuring the throughput. It's about measuring the patient's performance or the patient's experience through your system. So that's been a, a change. So we're working on that and we're trying to figure out a way to make that work with the diving capabilities so that we can look at an overall what is your lab turnaround time, but then look at exclusions and what is your lab turnaround time with those, you know, with those exclusions taken out. So working a little bit on some of that. Um, so another challenge is, or you know, has been working through, working with the end user to really understand their processes. We have a guy who's been in the IT department forever and everybody just loves him. So for me to come in and say, we're gonna do something different was kind of difficult, I think, for some of the, some of my end users to understand because I'm fairly new to the organization. They probably were thinking, who is this? You know, what is she doing? So, but we tried to bring them in on the weekly calls and just be transparent with them, let them know what we were working on. And I think they know it wasn't going to be perfect. So just partnering with them and having them help us get this because we have this great product that isn't doing us any good if it's just sitting there. But if they're working with us and we can get it up and running, it is saving a ton of time and hopefully helping us improve our throughput. So how did we do overall? Well, you know, I gave us a sad face for the, tar for the time because we, it, it took much longer than I thought it would. But what are you gonna do? Um, but we had a $60,000 budget, so we stayed under that, so I gave myself a smiley face. I think we might have uh, spent some of that with uh, post-implementation phone calls and stuff, but you know, we, we, we did okay. Um, and the scope, I can't say that we did or didn't do, you know, we didn't cover everything. We have um, one vendor that we are working with that it's been very difficult to get access to our own data. I'm not gonna say who that is. So we've had to come up with a workaround and that's sort of what we're trying to avoid in this is these workarounds of getting a report from a system and putting it into a text file and moving it here. So we're hoping that we are able to reach a solution on that. Um, so some of my lessons learned is that really wouldn't have been able to do any of this without the leadership support. Um, I think that we just had, with the new COO coming in at that time and looking to, to make some changes that helped us um, he really made a bold statement, I think, when we launched it in May. He told the team, this is it going forth. You know, we're not bringing the spreadsheet to the meeting anymore. This is our data. So, you know, we can fix it, but this is what we're going to, this is our baseline at, at this point. So that was, it was good to have that kind of vote of confidence. <laughs> um, I definitely think we underestimated the time that we need for the requirements gathering. Um, at first it was, oh, it's, it's just as easy as moving the SQL code into that. And so, oh, great, you know, I pull up the SQL code, send the files off, and yeah, no, it didn't work out that way. So there was a lot of um, stuff. It seemed like DI pulled in way more than we had with our old reports. So I had said already that we were, spent a lot of time going over to make sure we captured all of the exclusions. And I think we underestimated some of the technical complexity. I'm trying to handle this. You know, I work in the quality department, so um, we had some IT support, but um, I think you know, we 
probably would need a little bit more. And this morning's conversations on the lab, I was like, oh, you know, so I, that's not my area of expertise. So we definitely could use some assistance in that area. <laughs> um, but again, we're looking at what we're going to do next. So we want to start looking at our cath lab and doing turnaround time measures for them. And the goal is eventually to have, for our whole enterprise, turnaround times. Um, I think the next immediate step that we're going to do is start bringing in nursing interventions and some medication administration data sets. I think that's going to be huge and that's going to give us a lot more reporting capability than what we have. And our finance department, who actually has not used Dimensional Insight in quite a while, is kind of coming back on board. And they're working with Nora to start bringing some of their stuff back in to, that, to Dimensional Insight. So really getting, getting back to having the whole enterprise in one place. That's it. And does anybody have any questions? Good afternoon. My name is Sean. I'm from Children's National Hospital. Um, my first question is for the code blue. How did you guys transfer data from a paper into electronic? Because we too also, well, code blue, it's the time that everything that happens is on a piece of paper and then it gets scanned and placed in the patient's chart and file. But then there's really no or anything like that, so how did you guys uh, accomplish that? We have a, a, an actual charge code, and when the respiratory, when respiratory responds to it, they go in, there's a screen that they fill out. That generates the charge code. We didn't know that they, they were actually generating a charge code. It was just a task that they did. So we had to really kind of dig around in there and figure that out. So once we found that code, what he started to do was actually I'd go down to nursing administration and get the daily forms to make sure that we were capturing every code so that we didn't miss them. So making sure that that process was tight so that the so that respiratory didn't forget to put the codes in. And we have also implemented the Zoll defibrillators. So that's capturing our actual code event. So we are able to kind of marry those two together and, and see them together. So that's really saving a lot of manual time. Do you guys pull in other information from that coach or something other like codes that can potentially pull in such as medication administration? We're looking at medication, we're hoping to get a medication administration data set built. Um, right now what we've been able to do as far as medication is actually go into the pharmacy charges, and I can see medication there. And we used that earlier this year in for barcoding because our barcoding rate seemed like it dropped. And so when I we looked at the data repository report, I noticed that our volume of medication had doubled over last year. So I went in here and looked at pharmacy charges and they were, you know, for the certain for this medication, there's about thirty thousand, which is similar to what it was last year. So our denominator this year was showing sixty thousand. So something was wrong in the report. So we were able to find out that it was a mistake in the data repository report and correct that. Thank you. <laughs> yes. I think I've, I've said this before in other things that they've tried to do. Like sometimes they want to make the nurses do more documentation or they want to make somebody do this. And they say, ah, sell it to them as what it, what it means to them, what it brings to them. And so I think that whether it's data or asking for a different documentation or whatever you're asking someone to do, it helps if you can show them how this is going to benefit them 
how this makes their life easier. Otherwise, they're just hearing, she wants me to do something else that I don't want to do. So. That was one of the things that our COO really wants to do is actually bring in some of our press gaining information as well and start to correlate. If we make changes, how does that affect our, our scores? Um, currently, we pull our press gaining scores by received date instead of discharge date. So we have some work to do with that we have to change some of the process around how we look at our scores, but we'd like to start correlating the two together. So um, recently we changed, um, we moved one of the units to a different floor. So we wanna see how did that affect the turnaround time and how did that affect you know, overall, did that have any effect on the patient satisfaction? Did we get them to the room faster? Were they happier? Did the discharge time, was the discharge time affected? So we really wanna look at all of it. So, and it's very, very in its infancy right now. We've got a lot of work to do, but. Thank you, congratulations on the project. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.